Starting, all attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our fourth in our series of 10 webinars. Um, today's topic is called Introduction to Blogging. Um, and my name is Wendell, and I'm part of the um, Oxfam team. So um, welcome to this afternoon's uh, session. I'm really interested about learning about WordPress. I've been dabbling a little bit and I'll be much more comfortable knowing that I'm doing the right thing. So I'm really looking forward to today's session. And uh, so um, welcome to Nicole and over to you to say hello to our audience today. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our, as Wendell mentioned, our fourth session. Um, yes, I'm looking very much looking forward to discussing and showing you how to blog and um, going through all the nice little tricks that you can use on your blog. Uh, so yes, let's kick off. Wendell? Yes, over to you, Nick. Good day, all. Uh, my name is Nick, and I'll be supplying basic tech support for this webinar. <laughs> um, once again, it's started to be a norm for me to apologize to everyone before this because uh, most of the repeat attendees have heard me doing this every single time, uh, but it is still necessary and it will continue to be necessary, so please do bear with me in the future and today. Um, the organizers and presenter have the ability to share their screen with the attendees. When this happens, the white window that is currently displaying the webinar's name will change to show the presenter's screen. In this way, the presenter will share their presentation. For the attendees, you'll have a toolbar on the top right-hand side of your screen. With this toolbar, you can access two important things. The first is the raised hand button. This is generally used when you're taking verbal questions. If, during the allocated question time, the presenter allows verbal questions, select this button and it will highlight you to the facilitator and organizers. The second is the option to type in a question that will be seen by the facilitator and organizers. Due to potential mic problems amongst attendees, we usually default to written questions. In this scenario, I will transfer any of your questions to a Word document that can be seen by all participants via the share screen function. So please feel free to send through written questions during the presentation. I shall keep track of them and display them during the question period. Thank you very much and over to you, Nicole. Great, thank you so much, Nick. Um, just to share my screen with everyone. Thank you. Right, so as, as mentioned, today we'll be looking at blogging. Um, many of us may know and have seen and have read many blogs and seen it as very much like a, a news website, a place where people are just sharing their thoughts and opinions. Um, but a, So according to dictionary.com, a website is something, is a website containing a writer's or a group of writers' own experiences observations, opinions, etc., and often having images and links to other websites. So you can think of it as a personal diary when you write your daily thoughts and your daily uh, happenings and experiences. Um, in, in trainings I've done before with young girls, I always used to think of it as and describe it to them as saying, you know, back in the day when I was a young girl, I would write my thoughts, oh, my boyfriend today, he was so sweet and he left me a box of chocolates, etc., etc. So on a blog, you are doing the same thing. You are writing and sharing your same thoughts and your same experiences, except that here you are sharing it with the World Wide Web. You're sharing it with the entire Internet, of which we know is a very, very, very wide space. So why do we blog? Why do we want to do this? Why do we as NGOs or those in civil society want to actually engage in blogging? It's because blogging facilitates conversations and creates relationships. In the past few weeks, I've been saying that social media, social networking is a space where we are able to engage with our, with our, with our various audiences, with our various stakeholders holders and constituents, a blog is another way that we are able to do this. Here we can give a in personal inside a view of what is happening within the organization. So for instance, we are going out into the field and we are going to um, cover an event and we may not even be there to cover the event, but because we feel we want to share the happenings of a seminar or an event, we would then um, capture our thoughts, write it down or capture notes on our laptops and then go back to the office and go and 
capture these notes and then share it with the organization by way of email. A blog is just another way that you can do it in a nice, more creative way. So a blog also allows you to garner support and recruit volunteers. So yes, you can get people to jump on board and follow your cause, follow, follow that which you are doing. It is about information exchange between constituents, other nonprofits, and information specialists. So you are sharing your information, you're sharing your resources. It's about knowledge sharing. It also helps with accountability to donors. So often you find that um, we, in, us in this NGO space, we write long-winded documents with, with a whole lot of text. A blog is a nice way of displaying and uh, what the bad work we've been doing instead of just saying on paper, this is what I've done, this is how many people I've reached. Here is another way, a more, um, a, ni a nicer way on, an, uh, and a more creative way of sharing your information and sharing that which you've been doing. It is free and in most cases it is cheap. So if you want more, as with many of the social media platforms, if you want the, the fancier um, plugins and so on, you have to pay for them. But for the, for the free stuff, you're getting the best out of it anyway. You are able to share your information directly with your audiences without having to have all these fancy plugins that allow you to do extraordinary stuff. By just creating a blog, which we will do in today's session, you will be able to um, do so freely and also you have limitless space. So oftentimes you have to you create a website or rather you, you um, sign up with the internet service provider and they will help you build your website and you have to pay for these services um, and you have to pay for the amount of gigabytes that you get for the month. With a blog, it is limitless space. You can create endless amounts of pages on your blog and these endless amounts of pages can be shared with all of your audiences at any given time. So why do we blog? NGOs, CSOs, nonprofits, etc. are often underrepresented in news coverage and when they are included, they are often stereotypically portrayed. Even vocal and prominent NGOs are often sidelined. This lack of co coverage shows a major failing on the part of media to address real issues that affect the world and yet the media have a resp key responsibility in issues facing all. For example, educational opportunities, sexual and reproductive and health choices and poverty, poverty etc. So the media can also play a major role in transforming negative stereotypes, stigma and discrimination towards all. So by way of our blogs, we are able to show what we are doing. We can change these negative stereotypes. The media should also be seen as part of the solution in moving our world forward and our environment forward. So we can be the media. We can act as this we act within this media space. So we use blogs to document our voices. By using these technological tools we can communicate, exchange, express, disseminate, create, transform information, creates and create spaces for individuals to interact, whether physically or through text and other forms of representation. So through our blogs, we can encourage people to not only come watch and read what we're doing online, but we can take our activism offline. We can create our events and create, in, and, um, create information and post information about any kind of in, uh, event that we might be hosting, post all of this information on our blog and in so doing invite more people and have those people also then share the information, share the link of our blog and then, and then have and garner so much more support as mentioned in the previous, in the previous slide. So just a few statistics about blogging. 80% of daily blogs blog visits are new. So you want to work on getting repeat visits. You want to make sure that people keep coming back to your blog. And this is all about the kind of information, the kind of content that you are sharing. So you also optimize your blog for new visitors. Optimize, this is about search engine optimization, which is something we'll go into in the sessions in the around writing for the web, as I think it's the seventh or the eighth session. So I encourage you to participate in that one as well. Um, but yes, it's about our content, making sure that our content is rich with information. It's about knowledge sharing. 
So five times more visits. Blogs that post daily get ta five times more traffic than those that post weekly or less. So you want to make sure that you're getting more, you are making more posts, whether they are short, they are long, it doesn't matter. But make sure that you are posting often. Don't create a blog and just leave it to be static or outdated. Um, I'm sure for those of you who, who follow blogs or who visit blogs often, you see that on the right hand or, or in the sidebar or in the footer navigation, there is often an a archive button. That is where people can see how often you've been posting. So, and as, as you can see there, five times more visits if you are posting often. So if you are making blogs, blog posts every day, you can expect your traffic to, con to be constant and people to constantly coming back. So once you accumulate your blog post, your blog traffic increases by 53%, goes up by three times after 100 posts and by 4.5 times after 200 posts. Posting more often can help you accumulate more posts quickly. Just to reiterate the previous slide, yes, you blog more often, blog, 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 and you will have more traffic to your website, more traffic to your blog, garnering more, more support and volunteers to your to the, your cause or to your campaign or to the work that you are doing. So length matters. Longer blog posts attract more backlinks. So this is a little bit more of a more technical thing. This means that people are going to just leave your blog short uh, as soon as they've read the first few paragraphs, for example. You want to write short posts. Write articles that are at least one and a half thousand words long, but are, um, a good, a good um, Blog also can also be really short. It does not have to be extremely, extremely lengthy. So later on, we will also look at the different content types of a blog. So you can have a text blog, you can have an image. Last week, we spoke about infographics in which you can more and more text is or, or more information is displayed by way of images. And speaking about images, that leads to our next slide, where we say images matter too. Blog posts with more images also attract more backlinks. Include screenshots, graphs, infographics, and photos in your articles. So your people will come back, people will be interested, people will come back to your blog if you are, if you are doing it correctly and if you are posting often. Blog, most all blog, uh, blog platforms provide you with social shares. The platform, um, I'm sure many of you see, have seen the like it or follow button or pin it or tweet it. So what, it, what that is, is you are able to automatically share a blog post by the click of a button. So if somebody is visiting your blog, they like what they've been reading and they feel that they want to share it with their audience by simply clicking on tweet or share this, you, they will then be able to share your post with their followers on their Facebook platform, their Twitter platform, whichever platform it may be. So to get more people to share your posts, write posts they want to read and make it easy to share by adding social share buttons. So top credi credibility factors. So quality content and good design are the top two factors that add credibility to a blog. Make these two factors your top priority. And when we do, when we go through creating your own blog in a few minutes, you will see how simple it is to create a really good-looking blog. It, um, the WordPress platform has made it so simple that you really do not have to be a boffin or a web designer to be able to create a blog that is really appealing to the eye. Then morning, Monday morning rush. Blogs get the highest traffic on Monday mornings, so make sure, make sure more people read yours by publishing posts on Monday mornings. You will also be able to measure your, your um, statistics, measure who is coming to your blog, who, where, at what time they're coming to your blog by measuring the stats and the analytics on your WordPress blog, which is something we will also look at. And then they are the generous Thursdays. So these are posts published on Thursdays, which also get the most social shares. So often throughout the week, um, people are reading blogs and they are clicking on that share, share, uh, share this or pin this or tweet this. And this happens as according to statistics 
This happens on most Thursdays. I really like that, generous Thursdays. So make sure that your posts are also going out on Thursdays. And then the power of followers. Blogs with more social media followers get more traffic and backlinks. Work on increasing your social media follower count. So what you can do is, on your Twitter account, which you've created as last as we uh, went through last week, and in the week before, of in your on your Facebook account, make sure that you are sharing your blog link on both platforms, on all your platforms for that matter. So if you have an Instagram account, if you have a Twitter account, a Pinterest account, a Facebook account, your LinkedIn account, even in your email signature, you can share your your blog address link, your URL. So author versus authors. So you can encourage and invite multiple authors to write for your blog. This also adds more credibility. And especially in the work that we do, you can. this also adds to this idea of knowledge sharing. So you can invite somebody that is a specialist in whatever field or field of study and ask them to write and post that as a blog. So you can encourage people to guest blog on your blog. And then articles trounce ads. 70% of people learn about your organization from the article instead of through ads. So invest more into quality blog posts instead of temporary ads. I'm sure many of you have seen on Facebook, on the right hand side, even on your news feed, there's constantly news ads flashing on your page, well, maybe not flashing, but it's just so obvious that this just adds, adds, adds all over. With your blog, it's your space, it is all about you, it is all about what you have to say, so there's no ads and this is what we want. We want to share who we are, what we are all, are all about, our information, our knowledge sharing by way of quality content. So the value of blogging for us, especially in the NGO space. It's about public narrative. So it's geared towards campaigners. This is a process of weaving together personal, community, and campaign stories as a way of communicating shared values and vision. Think about the values framework that you're operating in by answering a few questions about the campaigning you're posting about, you're writing about. So why do I care? Ask yourself before you start posting, before you start blogging, before you start writing, why is it that I care? So you also want to build the trust with your audience through a story that tells them who you are and why you care, where you're from, how you got into your work, and why you're passionate about this issue. Alternatively, they share the, inf the source of your motivation. Tell the story of the person, animal, or place that keeps you focused and energized. So from this you can say, you can think about it as it's you writing in your individual capacity, and it can also be you writing on behalf of your organization. So you would you want to say so you want to answer the question why do I care if it is a personal blog, but you also want and if it's in the capacity of your organization, you want to say why do we care? What is it that we would like to achieve? What kind of change do we want to enable within the environment and in within our environment? So why do we care? It's also called the story of us. So create the link between the values that the story exemplifies. So it's hard work, protection, equity, whatever the case may be that you want to exemplify. All of this to your audience. So you want to tap into their interests, cares, and motivations. You want to poke at their emotions and nudge at their compassions. So what can I, what can we do? The story of now creates the opportunity for your reader to connect their vision for the world with a real world moment. It gives them the chance to be a part of the change as a funder, an advocate, or a volunteer. So connecting these opportunities that we've created for our audience together, we begin to create a picture of valuable engagement and hopefully victories. And these engagement and campaign stories need to be captured and shared. And we are able to do this by way of our blog. We are able to capture the stories of others. As mentioned in the previous slides, we want to possibly invite guest bloggers. We want to invite others who are real experts in a certain field. This adds to the quality of our content, rich quality content, the credibility of our content. So values plus facts 
equals impact. We are stepping away from telling people the problems of the world through policy jargon and big, complex numbers and finding ways to show them what's going on through compelling stories. Earlier I mentioned how that um, for us when we have to write our donor reports, it's of, of oftentimes long-winded documents with a lot of text. Here we have a way of sending them a link and showing them exactly what it is we've been doing within our communities. When we can create value for our audience by making our data and research more accessible and interesting, we can scale up our campaigns and impact. So here are another few questions which, whose answers can deepen our effectiveness. So what's our campaign, campaigning niche? Our strengths are visible in our past successes and these success, success stories offer a wealth of insight into who we are and what we do best. When we embrace this reputation and align it with the change we are now seeking, we're more likely to gather the supporters we need. So what does the success look like? When we can combine our critical analysis with a more vulnerable act of sharing our vision for the future, these stories can help define the nature of the victories we are seeking. They can rally and motivate these, those in positions of power willing to support your analysis and vision and put those blocking progress on notice as to what change will look like. How we are being heard, test how are we being heard? By testing the variations of our stories with our key audiences incorp and incorporating their feedback and learning from small failures. So I just want to show you, a, uh, I want to move away from our presentation and just show you a blog by a, um, an, ex, an actual Oxfam uh, blogger and show you how awesome, oh sorry, I actually closed that window, excuse me. There is a blog by an Oxfam um, participant and he is doing excellent work and now I seem to have closed that window earlier on. Well, Greenpeace are doing some, a, a similar blog, Greenpeace USA, where they are sharing their stories and as you can see there, stories and victories, we spoke about that, what does our successes look like, what, does, um, what are our victories, what, are, what, do, what does that look like. Um, yeah, they are saying what are we doing, they have a clear call to action, where they are saying donate today. They're saying, how does it work? Save the Arctic, that's the, that is the, the specific campaign that they are looking at. They have a search bar. They have all the fundamental, um, the essential tools that a, that a blog consists of. And if you look at this, it is extremely plain and simple, clear, it is clean. The newest, as mentioned earlier, um, they want to see how often, um, you have been blogging, so this blog was made as early as yesterday. With an image, this is a blog. On the left hand side, you are able to create a filter of the type of, of the topic that you would like to read. Um, and yes, this is a very nice blog of an a, a big international NGO environmental organization doing extraordinary work. And the at the top again, just to jump away from what I'm saying, um, here we ha they have the social media links just so that it's clear and everything that you would want on a blog is on this landing page and it is with the Greenpeace logo. So think of this, if you look at this, you would think of it as a website for your organization when in fact it is a blog. So when you are creating your blog and your organization doesn't have a website, you can actually think of this as a space that can operate as a website. So how can we tackle blogging in our organizations? So according to Roger Burks, our identity and personality, less nonprofit blogs, need less brochure speak and more authentic engaging stories. One of the things that will always come through about blogs is about it being spoken in the authentic language, speaking as if it is you speaking to someone else, speaking directly to someone, telling them about your organization. Um, when you are speaking, you're not, not using long, big, complex words. You are using plain language. So when you are blogging, you want to use a more informal, um, relaxed tone. 
you're blogging, you while blogging, you want to be a champion. You want to be a champion for your organization. So maybe that's you acting as a conduit between those who you want who want to contribute their voices to the blog and those who want to use those voices for organizational content such as marketing and social media. A vision, one that's easy to understand and realistic to achieve. Raja encapsulates this in the blog's description, which clearly communicates what this blog is, who is behind it, and who it is for. He uses the example of a of the Mercy Corps blog description, a daily look into the work, thoughts, and ideas of our team around the world. So when you're tackling your blog, when you're starting your blog, think of yourself as the champion that is the voice of the organization. You want to have a clear vision, so you will state this in your about section. Then you want to have a sustainability strategy, so a plan for providing and soliciting content in the quiet times. Our stats showed us that we want to do this on a Monday and on a Thursday. However, throughout those times, you can be constantly writing and sharing short posts. Flexibility. So to open up the project to other styles and voices than the brand traditionally uses. So be flexible. Yes, you want to be um, speaking in an informal tone. And this might sound a little bit contradictory. But if you think about the person that you might be inviting to write about a specific issue, this person may be an expert um, from a, and may come from a very serious academic background. That person will not be writing in an informal tone. So make sure that your blog is flexible to, uh, come to accommodate the informal versus the formal. So I have storytelling mentors to build your organization's non-communication staff into personal storytellers. So encourage others within the organization to contribute to your blog. It should not be, yes, you want to have one person as the champion speaking, blogging on behalf of the organization. But as mentioned in the previous sessions as well around Twitter and Facebook, you want to encourage all staff in the organization to actively participate in the storytelling of your organization. So types of blogs. You get news and journalism blogs, you get analysis and opinion blogs, you get educational blogs, you get humorous blogs, and you get research blogs. And for us in our work, we can often think of it in terms of news, analysis, opinion, education, research. But humor can be somewhere in there too, because a blog does not only, as I mentioned in the previous slide, we can create this idea of managing and balancing rather the informal versus the formal. So we have a variety, a very wide variety of blogging platforms. I've mentioned only a few up there and I'm only going to speak about WordPress. Uh, today we're only going to look at work, WordPress, but you also find that there are there's Tumblr, there's also Blogger, there's LiveJournal, Weebly, Squarespace, and some that I don't even know how to pronounce. So yes, let's look at some content ideas for blogging before we go into creating our own blogs. So you can share and comment on breaking news. One of the most effective ways to generate buzz for and buzz and traffic to your blog is to tap into the breaking news cycle. So for example, last week we had the whole debate around, or not rather, not debate, but rather the issue and the situation around Cecil the Lion. Here's a here's an opportunity for us to do something about that or to write about it, to share our opinions. So you can, if it's a news story that is breaking, write it first thing in the morning. And if it's related to your mission or your programs, do a quick write-up of two paragraphs or, or do a quick uh, two paragraph summary of a, or a commentary about this breaking news. Add a link to the original source and distribute it to those on your, that's following your blog. Um, then you also want to post calls to action. This is an ex extremely important thing to do for your blog. You want people to take action. Um, again, we're stressing this idea about garnering support, getting people to get involved in the work that you're doing, getting them to sign up, be it to just register, receive your e to receive your emails, because that is, or to receive blog posts. That is also a form of calls to action. Um, but also if you just want people to donate or to bring to the attention that they can volunteer within your organization. Um, 
so you want to post a call to action and this can even be a simple button that you're posting on your website. So it's also often tied to breaking news or inter internal developments within your organization. Um, it's well received if, when it's um, placed within your blog. A call to action is well received when it's placed within your, or, or, um, within your blog post. It can be an urgent donation pitch, a request to sign an online petition, or a call for volunteers. It's an amazing way to get supporters to be willing and be able to do work for your nonprofit, nonprofit if you just ask. So you also want to share stories, photos, and videos. You should be posting, you should be regularly fo taking photographs and posting videos at important events that your, your NGO, your nonprofit, your CSO is hosting or is attending. So you can do a brief write-up about the event, do a summary of it, take photographs, post it, Share, it on, share the videos via YouTube and embed it within your blog. This is also a, a nice way of just do, sharing a slideshow on your blog, but this, these are nice um, things that WordPress has also built into the site, which makes it very nice, uh, visually appealing on your blog. Then provide organizational updates. Um, if your NGO is launching a new program or campaign, you want to do a blog post to share the news and summarize the new program or campaign's goals. So your supporters will probably help to share the news because they will then share by clicking the share this option at the bottom of the blog, through share this through their social networks. Um, then share stories from the field. Uh, um, I've been saying this as well. So if Within, your, within the organization, staff members are going out into the field and doing field work. Let them take photographs. Let them do write-ups. Ask them to do short write-ups um, and, and capture the story and then do a short blog post on behalf of the organization. A first-person voice is always best. Um, Nonprofits that work in international development, disaster relief, or wildlife conflict wildlife conservation often do this sort of storytelling in print materials and website articles, but it also works really, really well as a blog content post. Then also interview experts. We've been saying perhaps you can invite experts within a specific and a specific field. You can invite them to do a guest blog on for you on behalf uh, on your blog rather. Um, but you can also do a 10 20 question blog interview with an expert in a rela an area related to your your organization's mission or programs and which can be interesting to your supporters so interview for example a professor a government official or a, an esteemed professional such as scientists work social workers activists or artists anything or anyone rather that is related to the work that you do then you can also allow guest bloggers to post commentary and share their expertise. Much like the post before about interviewing experts, yeah, you're just inviting them to actually write on their specific, um, around their specific area of interest and their expertise. So, so um, your role, however, is to give them a word, word limit because sometimes some people will give you, uh, will go on and on and on because they're just that passionate about what the, um, about the work that they're doing. So give them a brief, give them a topic, give them a deadline, and ask them for photographs. And then, of course, you will have to you will credit the, these writers and share. And uh, yes, you will credit them as the writer, as the expert within the specific field. Um, then you also want to share resources and useful tips. Um, blog posts that share resources and useful tips are some of the most popular on the internet. For example, if you are in the eye health nonprofit, you can write a post about foods that help um, help insert to help your health or help to stabilize your health or whatever the case may be. Or you can do tips. You can provide information on um, ten top ten tips on how to um, do certain things better. Whatever your field or your area of expertise is you can actually be the expert and share your 10 tips or 20 tips or whatever the case may be. You can also, that in that way, you are then also creating and making yourself the expert in that specific area. Um, you want to solicit feedback and direction from supporters. So when you are considering launching a new campaign or starting a new online community, go into other blogs 
look for and look for advice, look for tips, look at what others are doing. Um, and then also actually ask people for advice. Ask them what they think what they would like to see on a blog. Ask them what kind of information they would find useful. Um, what would get them to come back to your blog? Um, ask before you do write before you write to write a blog post asking your readers if they have any interest in donate, donating to your nonprofit via text and why or why not. So it's about asking people directly what it is they would like or would not like, what they would be interested. Would they be happy? with being asked directly for donation or would they like something more discreet. So it's about being direct with your supporters. Then you can also write numbered lists. These, as I mentioned in a, um, under the share resources and useful tips, here you can do the top, again, top 10 ways you can help fight poverty, uh, top 50 ways to get involved um, in your community. These, this, um, this is a nice way to to do short, punchy, um, to share short, punchy information that would actually stick. It's the type of information that would help somebody remember easily uh, instead of a long, long article that goes on that you would have to be scrolling endlessly for the information. And then highlight special donors, fundraisers, and volunteers. Blogs are a great platform for highlighting donors and volunteers and fundraisers and fundraisers and other supporters through your posts. Um, so you can actually say thank you to them by by creating special posts on your blog. Um, these posts can also be a very effective way in your be very effective in your newsletters, on your Facebook, on your Twitter. So what you will do then is tweet um, the special the donor, for example, saying, "Hey, I've written to you. I've." Um, I've written about you, here's our blog, and what they would then do is possibly tweet about it, they would share the Facebook post about it, and, so, and or if it's in their new newsletter, they would also then share it with their other stakeholders. So some style, some blogging style notes. Um, we spoke earlier about it being creating this balance between informal versus formal. Um, again, it's it can be your informal space. Often your website is this um, really information-driven place. It's this place where it's only uh, where you are only telling people what you who you are, what you do, how you can be of assistance to them. On your blog, you have the opportunity to be a little bit more informal, a bit more relaxed. And as I mentioned, you can actually invite people to come and write for you, and we and you would find that this person would then be writing in a much more formal tone. So it's about creating this balance and you are able to do so on your blog. You want to focus on unique content. So add a unique, interesting, exciting voice to the internet, one that is your own. So you don't, um, of course, we not we don't plagiarize. You want to write your own content. You want, you are asking your staff to go out into the field, to do summaries, to do briefs, to, uh, to do write-ups, and to capture the event, to capture what is happening at the event, be it through photographs, be it through video, and so on. So um, we've given an indication on my, on my slide over there, there's an indication of 250 to 300 words, or maybe not. It's entirely up to you. So you can actually have a variation. You can have short posts and long posts. So I gave the example about Cecil the Lion, which was breaking news last week. And if you want to actually have an opinion or share your thoughts around the issue and you felt that that needed to go out immediately, you would be able to sit behind your laptop, write the 300-word um, blog and share it immediately without having to give it, give it some serious research and thought and that would end that would have to that would um, result in a very long article. You get your blog can really be a variation of short and long as well. You also want to link, link and link again. So you want to you want to provide supporting information to your blog post. And when we do a, when we create the post later, we'll be I will show you how you are able to embed a link within your blog. Um, linking also 
is a nice way to show that you to 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 show that your your content is well thought. It, it is researched, and it also in, encourages people to come back to your post because it shows that you are using credible and creating credible, unique information. Then, as with all writing. Um, the rules of writing, you want to use appealing headlines, titles, that will grab your reader, that will grab the attention of your readers. So you want to write catchy headlines. And then do spelling and grammar check. Yes, we speak about this informal and personal tone, but that does not mean we should take away and from we should stop doing spelling and grammar check. It is still important because it is still your organization's name, it is still your reputation, and you want to show that you are um, that you know what you're talking about, that you are a credible organization that knows how to write, and yeah, it just shows that you have done your homework. <laughs> um, um, then you want to use visuals. We've gone through this. Use a picture or a video because it tells a thousand words and it just makes it look so much better. So now that we know what a blog is all about, uh, sorry, I missed one more slide. The future of blogging. We have live blogging and we have vlogging, which is video blogging. So I'm sure many of you have seen, in fact, this webinar could be just maybe a vlogging, uh, an example of vlogging, except we not see, you cannot see me. But if you look on YouTube, there are so many um, people out there that are actually creating their own video blogs, sharing their own stories, telling, um, telling what, sharing their information, saying what they think is what they think you need to be doing about a certain issue or about a certain topic and so on. Live blogging, however, is documenting made easy. It's immediate, it's easy to edit, and it's interactive. Um, for those of us who followed the, the Nkantla um, discussions on, par on Parliament, um, if you go to News24, that is live blogging. If you watch the Oscar Pistorius blog, um, News24, if you watched the, the coverage of the, that trial on, on News24, that is also a form of live blogging. Um, yesterday, we also had um, one around xenophobic attacks. This is also a, an example of live, a live blog. So any so a reporter will be live on the field and as I mentioned in last week's um, session we looked at the hashtag so all hashtags no to xenophobia are coming and filtering into this live blog on ewn.co.za so this is a really really nice real-time way to share information with your with your staff or with your constituents, with your networks, live on your blog, on your website in real time. So you can capture it in punchy short sentences. It does not have to be, you don't have to be sitting there writing an, a long essay. You can just do literally one-liners, click enter, and it will filter into your, your live blog, onto your live blog, and look like this. And it will look, appear as such to your readers and to you, those watching your live blog. Right, so we've been speaking about enough about what blogging and what it is and how it how it can help you and your organization. Now we want to actually create a blog. And it's as simple as going to wordpress.com. Um, because I've got created blogs in the past, my um, I'm, I'm unable to do it a, an entire sign up. However, when you get to wordpress.com, I will show you this. <laughs> you will get to this page and you will click create website. And for this web for this uh, session, we let's call it digital influencing. And as you can see, WordPress.com, um, it was searching to see if our name was already taken, and no, it hasn't, and it's given me a green check mark. So now I can go ahead and create my site and continue. Now, as I mentioned, I have already created a blog using my email address. 
so I'm unable to go forward. However, username and a password, and you will then click Next. By simply clicking in your email um, to, to activate your blog, you are all set to go, and you will get to a page that will allow you to, to add a new WordPress. So that's me. That's with the stage where I am at today. And create site. Oh, it's, I hope it's going to go through. And mm, as expected. Apologies. Let's start the log in. And I will just log in. And I want to create a new site. the name of my blog and as you can see over there it already is telling me that I can buy it for $18 a year to have it as my URL digitalinfluencing.com but because we, we want it to just be a free blog it will be appear as digitalinfluencing.wordpress.com this is where it's free then I want to give my blog a name and I will call it digital influencing <laughs> privacy that provides you with some privacy settings I want my blog to be viewable by everyone viewable by everyone but to block it from search engines and or I want it to be private so for us we would want it to be viewable by everyone already like I mentioned it's thinking about upgrading no no we just want a beginner WordPress we just want to be able to which gives us three gigabytes of space which is huge and for the amount of um, content we'll be adding and the type of content we'll be creating so no ads um, we won't have a custom website as as it already offered to us no e-commerce so we won't be able to be selling anything on our website yes it is a free blog a custom site address no thank you but maybe in future we would want to go that route especially for those organizations who don't have an organizational website this is something you can look into and if you if this is something you would like I'd be happy to guide you through this process as well so please feel free to contact me um, to as we to go ahead with purchasing a domain which is which would be digitalinfluencing.com or whatever you as your organization would decide on um, no ads, custom design, word view, video press, etc. None of the above. Now we just click create blog. And digitalinfluencingwordpress.com is ours. So next thing we want to do is visit our dashboard. And here we are able to already start creating our blog. What we want to do is go to the WP admin. This is the WordPress administ administrator pay space. This is a clear overview of how where you will set your blog up. Okay. On the left hand side, on the left navigation, gives us all gives us our toolbar gives us everything that we would be able to use to create our blog. So the first thing that we would want to do is to create a nice looking blog. We want something that would be appealing, that would look good to our, um, to our audience, that of, as mentioned earlier, to make it look good for our audience to keep coming back together with our awesome content. So what we want to do is go to appearance and then to themes and literally just click on themes. 
and then we can select a nice theme. Um, as you can see, WordPress gives us a whole host of, of themes from which to choose, some of which are free, others are paid for, like over there is one for $55, Christopher over there is $75, um, $79. I Personally, I find that purchasing a theme is unnecessary because the free ones are really good looking. Um, sometimes you don't really want something that is um, that's got that's flashing and that's got too many things happening. So I I think for the purpose of our um, our session, let's go with Baskerville, and you literally just click on activate. Thank you for choosing Baskerville now to customize our website. Now that we've selected our theme we can customize it as to something that we would like, to how we would like to see it looking. So already on the left hand side again, it shows you how the, that you can custom design it. So you can add a site title with a tagline and a logo. So let's you can change the colors and the background. You can change the font. You can change the header image. You can add widgets, and you can have a static front page. So let's start with adding a header image. Add new image. And since we about we are doing um, we are doing the digital influencing, let's select our header from our from our uh, uh, current webinar blog. Um, and over there. And open. And while it uploads. And over there you can see, you can change the title of your blog, your um, image details. You can add the image information. You can add a caption. You can add alt text. Um, again, the alt text is something related to search engine optimization, which is what Google will pick up when it is doing when it is busy indexing and crawling through your website, and it will index um, your content. So it is important to also then provide alt text on your image because Google will index it and. So if anyone is searching for anything related to this webinar or about, or rather related to your website or related to your blog, it will also pick up your images because you have named your image. So let's say digital influencing again. And select and crop. So it's going to automatically crop it for us as well. And let's just say... Let's just have it use that part. And voila, it is changed. Um, now we want to maybe um, change, add a logo which is something very important for many of us, for especially for us with our organizations. Um, we want to add the organization logo. So let's add that. Add logo. And again, we select Upload Files. We select File. And we select an image that we that is our logo. For in your situation, in your you will use your organization logo. And again, we just say digital influencing logo. And set as logo. And over there it's changed. Uh, if, if you're not happy with this font, you can also then change it. So just click back to get the rest of your menu. And you can say select fonts. 
I personally like the way it looks, so um, I will leave it. However, just for the for this, I will show you that you can select from a variety of um, different fonts, and over there as well. And then we want you can also then change the colors and the backgrounds, so it gives you automatic. Uh, palettes, color palettes. I like that because it works nicely with our back, our um, header image. So I will select that one, and I will use that, and I will click yes. And then widgets, which is a nice thing that we all want to do. We all want to add to our our um, blogs, so you can add a widget. To your footer. Okay. This is the left column. So this footer is indicated by this column here. Then you can add one there. You can let's say we can have um let's add a calendar. And over there is our calendar. And for to see, add a widget. And for this one, I think let's add a Twitter timeline. And for this, this is a little bit more tricky. You have to get this, your widget ID. You have to get this from Twitter. So you go, so last week we looked at creating our Twitter accounts, and because all of these social media platforms are also integrated, they're all working together, you can go to your Twitter platform, go to your settings, and to create, and what you need for your widget is the widget code. So I'm going to say create a new widget. So I want one with my timeline, with my user timeline. So it will show one. This is exactly how it will display on my on my blog. So to do so, I need to just then because it's already automatically created all the um, inputted all the information I need. It's I can just go and say create widget because this is how it will appear on my blog. And widget created. However, on our blog, it's not we do not need this entire HTML code. We simply need this long number displayed there. It is also the same number that is displayed in our HTML code over here. However, I find it much more simple to just grab it from up there in our URL. For more information on this, I will also be very happy to assist anyone. So please feel free to contact me directly and I will take you through this process as well. And I just go back to customize and I paste my long number in there. And I just then say, so where is it? Where is my, wait, there is my Twitter feed. Right over there. And I'm happy with that. So why this is really nice is because if you are, again, you're attending an event and you want staff back at the office to follow what you are doing, you are live tweeting about the event your staff or your followers, your supporters, anybody that is supporting the work that you're doing, they are able to come to your blog and actually follow only your tweets. So without having to go to Twitter and do a search for a hashtag around a specific issue, they, um, they can then just click onto your blog and watch it live on your blog all of the tweets that you are creating and posting on the go. So I'm happy with this. So maybe then I want to just add one more um, widget at the bottom over there. Let's say 
hmm, I want to have, because I value what my followers say, I want to post recent comments. So I'm going to add a recent comment um, widget in my footer as well. And then while that is loading, let's see. Okay, so as you can see, okay, there's nothing to display at this moment, but it will appear down there. And I'm happy with that, and all I have to do is save and publish. So now we've already created the framework of our blog. The next step, before I do continue, I want to bring to your attention the three icons at the bottom. WordPress has also made it so that you are able to see how your blog will appear on smart devices. So this is how it will look on an iPad or tablet, and this is how it would look on an iPhone or a um, Nokia, Samsung, whatever the case may be, but on a smartphone bottom line. And this is how it would look on your desktop. Now that we've created the framework for our, our blog, the next thing, which is which is probably the most exciting part, is now to start creating pages for our blog. But first, let us have a quick view of how our blog looks already. Let's just see that. So we already have an idea of what our blog will look like. So now to create some pages. And by that, we just simply go to Pages. It has already created an About. But we also have to add some content to our About. But we'll do that shortly. Let's first create some more pages. So pages are the menu items that you would usually see in the top, in your top navigation bar. So let's say, for example, our top pages that we want would be something like get involved and we can just close that and now you will see how simple it is to, to create content on a blog so we've created our title already now if, if the user clicks on get involved they will get this, the, the information that we'll type in now thank you for um, wanting to get involved. If you would like to volunteer, Oi. volunteer, click here. However, I don't have a link here yet, and I will show you and we'll come back to that in a few minutes. Now, on our right-hand side, we also have some, um, some information, some more, some more toolbars. So here you can do a preview, which would be this. Give you a preview, and it will show you get involved in the top navigation. And then you can also publish at a specific time. So you can actually put insert the time, the specific time that you want this blog to go live. We want it to happen right now, so I'm going to click Publish. And then I want to create another page. I want to add another page. So I'm going to click Add New. And for this, we will have a Contact Us. Um, we would love to hear from you. Please feel free to email. And, or, oops, or call. And you can, the, our page is complete, it's filled with information, and you can publish. Right. Now, we've created that page. 
However, I want a page, and so let's preview our let's preview our changes. Let's preview what we've done thus far. And as you can see, get involved and contact us. And there is our information. But now I want to manage the pages. I don't want I want contact us to be. I want to add a page under get involved. So to do that, I will click on add new. Okay. Now we spoke about clicking here to get to volunteer with us. Thank you for your interest. And that's all I'm going to say here for, for, this, for the sake of time. But I want volunteer to be a menu item under Get Involved. And to do that, on this page that I've created, on the right hand side is something called Parent. So the parent in this regard is Get Involved. So Get Involved will be my top navigation and a menu item under Get Involved will be Volunteer. So I'm happy with this and I'm going to publish. We've already, and now you can see, now we'll preview changes. And you can see over there, it's already created the drop down menu with volunteer. But again, we are still a bit, um, our blog is. We want to create links within our blog. We want to be able to see how easy it is to create, inf how easy it is to look at information, to link content within it, um, link content within our blog. So what we do is we go back to, oh, excuse me, we go back to the page where we created, um, where we created get involved information, the content on get involved. And the text over here reads, thank you for wanting to get involved. If you would like to volunteer, click here. So I want people to go to the volunteer page. To do so, I highlight the word here and I click on the insert edit link and a window will open. And I just literally take that link so this would be the case that you would use this, you would use the same um, process if you are linking from any website within your blog. So you click and you copy and you paste that URL in the link text here. That is the word you've highlighted, and you want it to open in a new window. You especially tick this box. When you want, when you are linking throughout to out of your blog, if you are linking within your blog, it's okay to keep that uh, block unchecked. However, you want people to stay on your blog. So, if the link is directing people out of your blog, then you want to open in a new window or a new tab, and then you simply click Add Link, and you can see that it is highlighted. So, I'm just going to click Update, and I'm happy. Right, so we've, there we are, we've created pages, we've created the top menu, and um, the top navigation menu, and we're happy with that, and we like that, and we, want, we, we are able and comfortable to be able to create new pages and new, new menu items and how it would look if we were to have drop-downs, etc. And so now we want to be able to start creating our blog posts. So you go to add new post. So let's say our webin we want to um, do a blog post on our webinar. Today's webinar was super exciting. <laughs> I hope everyone learned a lot. If you have any questions, please 
contact me. And I will be happy to assist. Signing off. Nicole. And I'm happy with my blog. Um, I can add some cat tags. So it's about blog, our tags uh, are ways to describe what our blog is about. So these, so these are described as key, are often described as keywords as well. So you want to say blog, um, digital, it literally is keywords. So technology, social media, of course, if you've created a much lengthier process, you'll have more tags to add and so on. Um, I want to set up, let me, let me add an image to actually make that look a little bit nicer. So to add an image, you click on Add Media. So we've already started creating this media library over here. And I click on Upload File. In fact, I think it would be a more exciting thing if we add a video. So let's go to a YouTube. Let's go to YouTube and let's just do a quick search for something on blogging. This will just um, show you how. This is just to show you how simple it is to actually embed a a video into a into your blog. So let's say that one, and before it starts, just pause. Oops, and we go to the settings. No, nope, excuse me, to share. <laughs> and there is the link that it's already generated for you. You copy that link, and now I go back to my blog where I'm creating it and um, my blog post, insert from YouTube. I insert my link in there, and now it will search. And there it is. And now I just click Insert. And all I have to do is publish. Yay, and as uh, WordPress has already been super excited for us, you're, you published your first post on this blog. So there it is with my video included, and it has a place for leave a reply so your users can comment. There are my tags, uh, my date. I can share this on my Twitter, so I will, I will share this on Twitter. It would require me to link my Twitter account, and I will just do that, tweet, and it goes out to my Twitter platform. So let's just close. Let's just refresh this page and see on our Twitter uh, feed at the bottom and see if it has appeared there. It's hiding my Twitter. <laughs> Uh, but let's go and view our site and let's look at our new blog post and over there is my new blog and over there you can see my blog with via wordpress.com my calendar is there my links are there, if, and as we go along creating a new, more blog posts, let's see if we can do another quick one as we're running out of time. <laughs> um, let's do a post, sorry. Let's add another post. And we want to say, get involved. 
And so don't forget, if you'd like to, to volunteer with us, simply click here. And again, we can just highlight that link, insert link, and copy that link again. And insert it over there, and add. And let's preview our post. And if we go to our About page, which is our landing page, we should have two blog posts. Wait, we actually didn't include our about, about post, about information, which is obviously the most important, where we're telling everyone who we are and what we are about. So please do uh, add that information. So if we click on our header, it will take us to our home page, our logo, it will take us to our landing page where our blog posts are, and where is my post? Okay, it's not showing my post yet. <laughs> and publish. And my second post on this blog has been published. So this is how you create a blog, this is how it looks, this is how you are able to create a website, a blog that looks like a website, that will operate as a website where you'll be able to add news and information. There we go, there's our second post. And as you carry on creating posts, adding new blog posts, your page, your landing page over here will start to fill up. Um, again, just to stress, I didn't get around to it right now, but add information on your About Us. Um, this is super important because it will tell the world who you are, what your blog is about, what information it is that you would like to share with them, um, what, who, you are, who you would like to get involved with, how you would like to get involved in what they're doing, etc, etc, etc. Speak, just share information about you, about who you are and what it is you're doing. Um, this is blogging in a nutshell, but I'm very happy to also work with anyone who would like to build their blog and make it, build it into something that can be a fully functional website for your organization. Please feel free to contact me on this. Um, that is our, web, our webinar for today on blogging. I hope you all found it interesting and learned a whole lot. And again, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me and I'm happy to assist. Over to you, Wendell. Wow, thanks Nicole, that was really, really interesting. I must admit I have learned a lot today. I'm not sure I could do it all, but I would certainly try. Um, and uh, Nicole, <laughs> it, you make it look very easy, I must admit. I have so much laugh when I start, <laughs> I think I still do. So you did make it look very easy. Um, <laughs> But one of the things that I thought was so interesting, and maybe and maybe just to take one step back, um, many of our partners and Oxfams and other organizations around the world already have a, a website and Facebook accounts and Twitter accounts, say, for instance. So would you recommend partners have all of these platforms or um, which? how would they know which to prioritize and which would work better for different types of, of content? Okay, so I, this is really a thing for organizations to do. So do, literally do a social media audit. So oftentimes you, you will find many organizations will have signed up for all of these accounts. Um, so, of, so for example, you'll find that you've signed up for Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, and before you know it, you have thousands of followers on Facebook and Twitter but barely a hundred on Instagram and YouTube. So that should give you an indication that most of your people are interested in your activity on Facebook 
or and Twitter, or that they that is where your followers actually are. That is where your uh, most of your audiences are and where they are most active. So you you have an opportunity to either grow the audience on Instagram and YouTube, but that would obviously then require more effort on your part within the organization and more time. Um, or you can just again the speech to um, what we'll do in the in the um, sessions coming up to make it more seamless. So have your, your YouTube account, it's fine. It's even though you only have a few subscribers on your YouTube channel. Why it's important to still have it? Because you have a blog where you can have people watching your YouTube videos. So you create the YouTube channel, you upload your videos and you show you, you let people watch your video on your blog or on your Facebook instead of directing them to go to YouTube and watch it there. So it's, it's, a, it's a case of, yes, I'm active there, but I'm not putting my attention or focusing my efforts in growing numbers there, but I'm using the platform to make my other efforts stronger. So you're using your YouTube on your blog and it's just making your work so much, look so much more exciting. You're showing your videos on your blog, you, even on Facebook for that matter. So yes, it is exciting to be in all of these spaces. It is exciting to have a blog, a Twitter account, a Facebook account, but yes, it is also time consuming. So it's about doing the social media audit, audit so that you are a, sorry, social media audit, so that you are able to see where your efforts will work best, where, and, on, and this also speaks to your content. Last week, no, the week before, we looked at um, Facebook Insights. That is an excellent way at measuring whether your Facebook reach is, is worthwhile. It's an excellent way at seeing if people are actually interested in what you are doing, in, in, uh, if they are interested in what you have to say. And again, sometimes it's not in the amount of followers you have on Facebook, but the amount of people your, your specific piece of content reached and that is measured in the insights. So for those of you who missed that Facebook session, I suggest you go and watch our video on our blog <laughs> to go and see what it's all about because it really is interesting to see how useful those insights are because exactly that, Wendell, you can be doing all of these things and then it's just pointless because nobody's actually following or nobody's actually going to your blog or going to your Twitter account and so on. So. And yeah. then, would you recommend um, using similar content across all the platforms? So, say for instance, I follow one of our partners, Cinemandla, which they do regular stories about some of the women that are part of their um, savings groups. So they'll feature a person um, or a, a group of women and then they'll have a few pictures to go along with that Facebook post. So would you yeah. then also recommend that say for instance on their Facebook page, uh, I mean on their website, they have a featured more in-depth article and then on their blog they have a personal account, say for instance, from somebody who was involved in the organization or the group. And this again speaks to editorial policy mm -hmm. within the organization, what it is, so you can decide how you'd like to approach it. Again, coming back to this time consuming thing, you can create all of these pieces of content, but that's only if you specifically have the time. I mean, I wouldn't, um, if you don't, if you don't have the time, you wouldn't want to be creating a blog post, a Facebook post, hmm. and a website post. Instead, you could be creating a Facebook post, which could then be tweeted, hmm. um, the one-liner, which would link back to Twitter, to Facebook. Um, you can be creating the blog post, and you can create a link which you can share on your Facebook page directing people to go read it on your blog or your website. It's just about integrating all of these things so, so that you're not duplicating the work. Mm -hmm. You can vary it exactly like you're saying. You can say you can have something on the website that's more in-depth, which is advisable of course. Um, the blog you can have a more personal piece which um, is more like an interview for example um, with the specific, with this particular woman or somebody from who she's worked with or somebody that's helped or whatever the case may be. And then on Facebook you have a, a, a collage of photographs with a big caption describing what it's all about. So it's, it's also about variety because if you're duplicating things, people are going to get bored with your type of content and they're not going to be interested in wanting to go to your blog 
your website and your Facebook. So I think it's about spreading it all out. So like with the blogs, today we learned that Mondays and Thursdays are a good day. <laughs> on, Facebook, um, on Facebook, we learned that it's good to um, share posts at 6 o'clock in the morning and at 12 o'clock uh, and again at 3 o'clock. So I guess it's about spacing out your content and then it's, it won't be duplicated if you are using the same content but re repackaging it for the different platforms. Hmm. Hmm. Um, and um, I like the idea of, of guest blogs. Um, you know, I think a lot of our partners have really interesting people coming to visit their organizations. So I know the Wozamoya team are on with us at the moment and they would share with you many of the, the visitors that have come <laughs> through their organization. So could you ask one of some of your visitors that come to visit and contribute to your programs to write a blog? Would that also contribute or be of interest? Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely, I, I think what I think two or three of the slides repeated that mm. how important and excite. It just also gives this excitement or this variety. So it's not only you speaking in the personal tone. Um, I mentioned this formal versus informal. So your blog might be something that's much more informal or playful, more humorous maybe, and then you invite a, a, an academic or you even invite a donor to say why exactly they are funding you because of the work that and they would then go on to, in a very, very, very formal tone, go on to say why they want to fund you, etc., etc. So it just also creates this variety and again, it, it's about you guiding them as to how they can write their blog, you know. So. Um, you, you might find that they would write a 2,000 word article and as we know writing for the web you don't want somebody to write, um, <laughs> write a lengthy piece where they're going to be scrolling for hours because then they're just going to move off your blog. So it's, it's about, um, yes, I love the word variety today clearly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, it's about getting different pieces of content onto your website because you also don't want to be the only one talking. And it also just makes it, especially if your, your blog is trying to be or is aiming to be a knowledge sharing space. So now you're getting different voices or different um, kinds of information. It just shows that you're also putting yourself out there to be an, the expert on a specific topic. So you're not just saying you are, the, you are the expert, but there are others out there and this is our way of becoming this knowledge sharing space. Hmm. I like the idea of experts because I think, you know, many non-profit organizations are experts in their field. So whether it's home-based care or whether it's um, working with people with disabilities or whether it's looking at um, the accessibility of, of toilets and communities in rural areas. So, you know, I think um, many times we, we don't recognize ourselves as experts, which we actually are. So, um, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> so I like no, and, and it's actually expert. that. Hmm. Yeah, and 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 that was one of the things that I mentioned in the one of our very in the very first slides is that. Um, we are underrepresented in the media and blogging is becoming such a, uh, a an excellent way of becoming of changing stereotypes of of um, breaking the negative stereotypes because so many people follow blogs mm. so this is a good way to for us to become more prominent in the media because media influences follow blogs media influences themselves are bloggers mm. so yes be the experts. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's really interesting. Are there any <laughs> from anybody in the audience? I know we had some problems with people logging in, so um, I think we've got quite a small audience. But let me know if there's any questions there. Um, I don't see any. No, no. So yes, we'll I think, um, just make sure that we will post, post this uh, session to our blog and um, we'll sh maybe we can share the link with everyone. As soon share the link, the blog link with everyone, just to make sure they got the way they're able to get today's session. Yes, I think so too. So just a reminder that um, that next week maybe you can give us a quick rundown of what we're looking at next week. Gosh, what are we looking at next week? Uh, we're looking at Instagram and LinkedIn. Yes, we are looking at Instagram and LinkedIn. So Instagram is a photo sharing platform. Um, you 
Instagram is turning everyone into a photographer these days, especially with the millions of gorgeous filters that they have. Um, I, I promise I won't do another selfie collage of myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Instagram is this photo sharing uh, space, so we'll look at Instagram and how you can use this within your organization. Um, then we will look at LinkedIn as a more, which is a more professional platform. Um, it, many organizations, many individuals rather, are posting their profiles on LinkedIn as professionals. So if you go and look for me on LinkedIn, you will see my entire career history, um, where I've worked, what I've, my skill set. Uh, my, what my skill set are, um, people that have endorsed me for specific skills, and this this is really becoming a tool, a um, a platform that allows people to go and see is Nicole the real deal? Is she really skilled at facilitating webinars? So um, we have to look into these things, this this platform because it is a growing platform for professionals being in the professional space. So as an organization, especially if you are producing research documents um, or research in, in or writing articles, ex expert articles, many people, many individuals are doing so and posting these on LinkedIn and they are going viral. Hmm. So it's a really nice space to be in. Um, especially as a professional. Um, so yes, we'll look at that next week. Excellent. I'm looking forward to that. Um, I will say, I will say at the at the beginning already that we'll spend the greater part of our session on LinkedIn because it is quite a intricate space. <laughs> um, they call it. Let's just remember six degrees of separation. You will see how small our world is when you look at your networks on LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, thanks uh, uh, for that, Nicole. Yes, I'll go and check out my LinkedIn profile and see if it's up to date. <laughs> <laughs> if you are as professional as I know you are, Wendell. <laughs> so thanks, everybody, for joining our um, uh, fourth in our 10-part webinar series. Um, and just to remind you of the next six sessions that are coming up and to go and um, RSVP and join up for the sessions that you're interested in. Um, and also to go to the blog and have a look at my attempt at WordPress, which definitely isn't quite as, <laughs> as good as Nicole's. I'll have to go in and, and change a few things. It's awesome. <laughs> and it's so excellent, Wendell. Getting late, so thanks everybody for joining, and we'll see you next week back on Thursdays. So Thursday, the 13th of August, uh, we'll see you for Instagram and LinkedIn. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for your participation today. Thanks. See you next week. Cheers, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, Wendell. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay,